And before you are seated, I'd like to read a few verses from Colossians chapter 1. The message this morning doesn't really come out of this particular passage, but I think this passage does a great job of giving us the context in which we're going to be thinking for these next few moments. It's all about the supremacy of Christ. Beginning at verse 15 of chapter 1 of the book of Colossians. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. You may. And we ask that you would speak to us. We need to hear from you. We need to understand the significance of Jesus Christ in our lives and in the life of the church and in the life of the community and the world around us. So help us to see Jesus and help us to understand to a deeper level than we ever have before, the significance of Jesus Christ. In his name we pray, amen. Well, as the song says, it's the most wonderful time of the year. So the song says. And for the Christian world, the time that is designated as Advent is very significant. A lot of things are going to be happening in these next few weeks, not only in our lives, but in the life of the world around us that we live in. And one of the things that is going to happen this year, count on it, is that there is going to be a hue and outcry from some in our church, Christian, religious tradition concerning the so-called War on Christmas. I'm sure you've heard about that in years gone by, and it will continue. That there seems to be a concerted effort in our society, in our Western society particularly, in the United States particularly, to find ways to water down the religious element of this season of the year, to try to remove that and make Christmas more of a a multicultural, secular kind of thing, leaving the spiritual and the Christian message out of it. Therefore, Merry Christmas becomes replaced by what? Happy Holidays. Christmas concerts in schools are now called what? Holiday concerts. Christmas trees in public squares are now called holiday trees. Nativity scenes are now banned from certain places, uh, not just on public lands, but on many private ones as well. And we are increasingly being told that we are to leave Christianity out of it. It's okay if you want to include that with your own family or your own church or your own circle, but not in a public situation. And we Christians can get really up in arms about this. 
And so we talk about, let's keep Christ in Christmas. We talk about Jesus, the reason for the season. Some people who feel otherwise think we're crazy to put so much emphasis on this. Why does it bother you so much, they will say. Why do you get so outraged about this? I'll be honest with you that in my judgment, I don't expect a non-Christian world to be all that concerned about the Christian dimension of Christmas, even though I would love to reserve my right to be able to proclaim that and anybody else to do the same. I'm much more concerned about those of us who are Christians who say let's keep Christ in Christmas and who say Jesus is the reason for the season and then go along our merry way and leave him out of it. That, to me, is a much greater sin. But you can take that for whatever it's worth. I think anything that reflects negatively on our beloved Savior should concern us, obviously. But how we express that and the level of our outrage and all the rest, I'll leave to all of you to determine uh, how that works for you. But I'd like to talk this morning about one element of this that might be considered Exhibit A on this war on Christmas. When people say, what are you talking about? Oftentimes, the first thing that comes to mind is, let's talk about the phrase Xmas. Xmas, not Christmas. It is seen as another deliberate attempt to take Christ out of Christmas by taking the name Christ and removing it by putting an X where it goes. As one author says, it seems to be some diabolical, grinchly plot to subvert Christmas, some part of a worldly plot to overthrow Christendom. Replacing Christ with an X is literally crossing out or erasing the religious element. Is it a deliberate attempt to do that? It's an interesting question. In some cases, it probably is. But before we go on too much of a rant, we ought to acquaint ourselves with the term a little bit. It has a very interesting history. When do you think the term Xmas, X-M-A-S, uh, was originally done? How long has it been around? 50 years? 75 years? 100 years? Would it surprise you if I were to tell you that we see published works with Xmas for Christmas as early as the 15th century? It's a long time ago. And that according to Webster's Dictionary, Xmas was in common usage by the 16th century. And would it surprise you to know that these occasions of Xmas being written were not in secular publications? but they were actually in writings sanctioned, designed, and written by the church. Indeed, the, they, the term Xmas was begun by the church and church people. That surprised me when I heard it. It has a very interesting history. I've titled this the X in Xmas because that's really the key here. The English letter X is, as Nancy mentioned earlier with one of the Christmas, actually the Greek letter Chi. And Chi is the first letter of the Greek word Christos. And Christos is the Greek translation of the Hebrew, Messiah. Christ means Messiah. 
And the word Christ begins with a chi, or in English, an X. For centuries, the Christian church used the chi, the X in English, as a symbol for Christ. It adorns all sorts of Christian artwork through the years. All sorts of iconography includes the X, meaning specifically for Christ. It's nothing new. And historical evidence suggests that the original intent of the word Xmas was to highlight Christ by using that X to make us look at it in a different way. How many times do you say Merry Christmas and actually, literally think of Jesus? Christmas is a word. And actually there seems to be historical evidence to suggest that the the X was specifically used so people would stop and remember that Christ is in there. Isn't that interesting? It's the exact opposite of what we usually think. The X in Christmas is Christ. And so they did that. Now, some of it, there's also historical evidence to suggest that uh, in the early uh, printing presses, it was not the easiest process to do. And by reducing five letters to one letter made it a little easier to do. There's probably some pragmatic purpose in that as well. But let's not get away from the fact of what the X represents. The X in Christmas is Christ. That's what Advent season is all about. That's what for our church it's all about, and that's what I hope it is all about for your family. And so as we may get angry at our world around us for leaving Christ out, Let's make sure for us we keep Christ front and center and in. So what are we going to do when we see Xmas for the next few weeks? And you'll be seeing it all, all the way. Get angry about it? Well, I suppose that's one response. But I think a better idea is that when you see Xmas... Remember, call it to mind what the X in Xmas means. It stands for Christ. And in your own personal life, when you see Xmas, thank God for the significance of this time of year. Thank God that Christ came to this earth. And one more thing. When you see Xmas this time, this year? How about using it as a teachable moment? How about using it as a witnessing tool, if you will? If you're with your children and your grandchildren and you're out somewhere and you see Xmas somewhere, rather than hoping they don't see it, how about pointing it out and saying, you know what that means? You know what that means? That X is a stand for Jesus. That's to tell us that this time of the year is all about him. And it doesn't have to be with just your kids or grandkids. Maybe you're out with other friends and you see that somewhere. Be a great conversation starter. What do you think that means? I want you to think about that. Think about that because, in effect, that's really what we're all saying when we say keep Christ in Christmas, isn't it? Isn't that what we're saying when we say Jesus is the reason for the season? Let's make sure he really is and find ways to not only engage that personally, but help others to do the same. That's our task this month. Keep Jesus front and center. Or dare I say, Let's keep the X in Xmas. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, this is month, this, this, this Advent celebration is all about you. It's not about us. 
It's not about anything we do or anything we receive or anything we give or any of the rest. All that stuff is great, Lord, and we look forward to all the good times for this month. But help us to remember that at its heart, at its key, there is Christ. And without Christ, there is no Christmas. So, Lord, remind us of that this month as often as you can so that we might truly keep Christ where he needs to be, not just this time frame, but in all. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.